So this is uh, part two. Welcome uh, with uh, at the an another video of this orchid saga, of course. <laughs> but I'm still uh, working on this repot. I did uh, put it in two sections this video because uh, time-wise, otherwise it would be uh, too long. But this is uh, where we left uh, at part one, and um, so I wanted to show you that I didn't cheat. <laughs> and we will now start uh, picking up and uh, orchid by orchid and uh, put them up and get them started basically in self-watering. I did forget to, <laughs> to push the record button. I'm sorry, the only thing that I did is just grab my pot and my inner pot and filled up the uh, base layer. I will put in a few more so that the roots who are already uh, here on my cycle will not go into the reservoir directly. That's, that's really asking for a lot, uh, in my opinion. So, um, but I need to grab my Cintiq. Put a little bit of Cintiq in uh, with the Saigos. I have a feeling that they like like moss and uh, therefore I like to use my moss. It's uh, the inorganic moss, the Cintiq. Very beautiful stuff. It works pretty much the same. And uh, I have a feeling, like I said, that uh, the Saigos do like it. Just a bit, not too much. We need some air in there as well. But they, uh, like I said, yeah, I think they like the, the moss around their roots, at least to get them started. So therefore I use a little bit of Cintiq to uh, basically mimic that effect that you get with uh, regular moss, with organic moss. But I, uh, you need to... Uh, learn to work with it, like uh, just the organic moss as well. If you have too much in it, you uh, will do some harm. I'm sorry, you will do some harm, harm to, the, to the roots because it stays too wet. And it may sound a little bit funny because uh, same hydroponic is, uh, and growing in self-watering is all about having water constantly, constantly moist pots. But if you have it too tight, too much of it, it's uh, there's more water even around the bulbs and less air and that will cause some rust quite quite quickly in my experience uh, in my uh, I probably I may have it already on my channel or it will come up I have a Miltonia where I did, that I did put my uh, her Alexander uh, that I did put uh, uh, into too much Cintiq and that caused some troubles but I'm at this moment, because I'm a little behind filming, I hope you can uh, can hear me uh, while I'm filling this up, but I'm really uh, a bit behind filming, so therefore I'm not really sure if I already put it up, but it will be there soon if it's not already there. I, th I think it, uh, it will, uh, will come up. Uh, it needs to be uh, loaded up uh, still. But then uh, we will talk about uh, too much Cintiq, Cintiq in a pot and the effects uh, for it. Or you, can, uh, you will get. It's one of my older Miltonias and I now uh, find, uh, found a way to rebloom them and really starting to get them to grow. But that one is not doing so well even though it's one of my oldest because I messed it up quite a, quite a, quite a bit. Um, because of the Cintiq, and it's still in there because it started making some roots, but now I have two rotting bulbs. So, thereby that one needs to be repotted. ASAP. But I first do this, this guy. <laughs> it's just, um, yeah. Sometimes there are many things to do, and it's okay, I really enjoy them, don't get me wrong. I probably will do uh, that repot tonight, but that will not be in this video, obviously. Okay, need to get that done as well. Okay, and meanwhile, I hope you can see what I'm doing. I also hope you can hear what I'm saying. I'm, I'm I notice that I sometimes, especially when I'm standing here and I'm repotting um, the volume of my my voice, um, at least the camera doesn't pick it up very well. I apologize for that. I noticed that. I try to figure something out. Uh, the sad thing is I cannot attach a uh, extra mic to my uh, camera, so I therefore should have buy a new camera. 
But I am also, we are also rebuilding, uh, re, yeah, rebuilding, remodeling, rebuilding the home, the house. So I basically do not have the budget. Yes, and it sounds, I always have some money left to, to buy Argus. I know, I shouldn't do that. But yeah, that camera may, may come, but I hope you know, you understand. This is fairly new to me. And I'm like, well, yeah, I don't know. Will I always film my orchids? I probably will because I enjoy, enjoy it. But do I need a more fancy camera or not? And my, uh, my uh, birth birthday is uh, in September and we are now in June. So pro we probably have to wait a little bit. Maybe my husband do, does watch this video and he now knows what to buy for me. <laughs> Probably not. It's not that he doesn't want to uh, watch my videos, but there's so many, and there's only that many amounts of hours in a day. So yeah, I get that. And what I will do is attach this back bulb. To this uh, water meter just to get it more uh, get it more stable established in a pot because it's a little bit too wiggly for my liking so I grab my uh, let me show it my wire uh, I need the other end there you go let's tie it up and it's very important to do this if it's uh, if your orchid is moving a lot because of the new roots, they will uh, will not enjoy the, all that movement and will probably break off quite easily. So therefore, I like to uh, attach them to my water meter because it's already there, so it has a double use this time. Gives the indication of the water level and uh, also holds my orchid into place. <coughs> so. We will put it in her pot. It's a little bit angled now, but it's okay. It's not too much. You can see that this root is very close to the media, as is that one. I also have some Cintiq left there. I can put it right underneath that uh, root uh, if I lay a pebble on it, for example. But I have also quite some holes between the roots to get that air movement, uh, keep that air movement there. So that's the first one. Uh, let me, uh, I will do the text in a minute. Let me grab the, the next one. And yeah, I will be right back. I need to grab my pots. So I did uh, grab my uh, next pot for the smallest ones. This pot does fit, but it's no, actually it doesn't completely fit. I have a little bit more uh, sticking out of the uh, outer pot. For now, it's okay. I, I I did sometimes did cut it off just to create a similar look as this one. But what you get, it's very flimsy, flimsy pots. This is really this this edge is holding the pot together. So therefore, I now leave it on, and this is what I uh, what, what it is. Um, if I really dislike it, I can find another pot and it, it will get buried in there more. But for now it's okay. I'm going to leave it. I need to grab a new water meter. So it should stay in there, but it doesn't want to do that. So that's okay. So what I do in this case is again a layer with the larger pumice first, like I did uh, at the other one, recycle. But now I will start using the smaller pumice. Let me give you a quick, quick look. I found new, very teeny tiny pumice again, and I did bought it. Before I used some uh, small uh, lava rock and leka. I still have it, but I really really enjoy this more it really feels yeah it feels very very clean I don't know what it is I really like it so that's my preference uh, 
material to use, the most preference one. Most preference one, I don't know. That's not correct English, I apologize for my uh, lack of words. Okay, let's move this arcade into the pot, like this. Get it established, and as you may have seen on the other one as well, I try to keep as much room around the edge, so this arcade has some years to grow into that space. And I'm only going to use small um, pumice and no Cintiq, because these guys uh, like their uh, air around the roots as well, so I don't need the pumice in there. Uh, the Cintiq, I'm sorry. Only the pumice. And I think it will like that. This, I have more dendrobiums, but not really these, these types of dendrobiums. They're new to them. So we will have, and because I can see this one uh, with other growers as well, but they, most of the times I see it uh, mounted. But I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna try it. And from the top of my head, I think Nina from Ninja Arcade has one as well of something similar. I, but I don't remember if they if she has it in self watering or not. I didn't ask. I should I probably should have. But I, on the other hand, I'm just gonna give this a try. You never know, right? And I like to try things out as well, but on the other hand, if somebody already does have some experience sometimes, that can help obviously, but uh, again, I didn't ask um, her, and she's always willing to help, so uh, I know that from experience, <laughs> very, very kind, uh, kind artist grower, YouTuber as well. And those care claps were origin originally her idea. And I recently emailed her and said that is the best idea ever. Beautiful. <laughs> it is. It's a beautiful, beautiful idea. But she's very creative, uh, I think. But still, I try to be a crea creative as well, but I never would think of uh, about a care collab on my own, <laughs> to be honest. A top dressing of pebbles. I did that one, uh, the same top layer uh, for my... Uh, Cycle as well. I think I did forget to mention that. I apologize, but I uh, always do a top layer, and that is something that I saw on uh, Annabelle's channel, the Arcade Room, and I really like the look of it, and I really do think it helps. So that's why I like. I keep uh, adding those pebbles as well. Okay, so we have quite a lot of roots there. I did put them around the water meter just to give it a little bit more hold. And I hope you can see it, but we also have some space. We see some new roots there, but also some space um, in between the arcade and the uh, mixture, the media. And that's what I like. So if I have my fans going, it's very moist around the roots, but there's still air coming uh, in between the uh, media and the arcade. It prevents a rotting. So this is the second one, and I will grab um, my materials for the next one and I will be back. And there we are again with um, number three, same situation, same, this is the same story. Um, let's start with a first layer of pumice. Oops. Uh, it's probably a little too much. Hmm, I don't know. We shall see. It's the preparata. The second one. Uh, she's a bit of a climber. Mm, try to put a little bit forward. Not backward, but a little bit forward. So 
the roots are a little bit closer to the median and I have more cut layers standing out of the above the pot the potting media a bit more than uh, than uh, other orchids do I never had any problems getting the roots in because I can quite get it humid in my uh, in my uh, greenhouse for most of the times so I think it will be okay and for this orchid I again only use the big big palmas Wiggle it a little bit to get it into in between the roots a bit more easier. So I fill up the gaps there, and now I can stand on her own again. So it's a bit easier for me to put in the new media, and I think it's okay like this. The only thing, it could have been a little bit further back into the pot. I have, this is a root, it's strangely uh, kind of hitting the edge of the pot, so therefore I wouldn't, yeah, I didn't want to break it, but the end of the arc is now here and could have been here. But just a little bit, I'm going to leave it like it is. If it's uh, growing into the pot and I uh, uh, and reach the edge of the pot, starts a new growth, I then can easily up pot it. But we first need to get at that point. <laughs> Probably will be, uh, hopefully if everything goes well in about a year maybe, something like that. But we will see. So this is her, see, I think we, uh, we have some holes there, do I mind those holes? Uh, no, I'm going to leave it, I'm going to leave it. But why do I leave that hole there? You can see we have some big hole there, because the older parts of this arca, the older bulbs are there. They, it's highly likely that they will not shoot out any roots anymore and I have a lot of media on the front where I do expect the new roots. So I think it's okay and a little bit of air around the older roots is, is kind of what I uh, really like because otherwise yeah, these can start, uh, start rotting uh, a bit quicker than if you have too moist around it. So therefore I leave that hole there and keep it uh, very airy around those uh, around that section of the orchid and I put it in her pot and I did prepare the other one finally I start to learn how to do things <laughs> so I can uh, move on I don't have to pause this video you stay there I will fill it up first the uh, first layer of pumice Yeah, probably can use a little, bit. a little bit more. Let me see. Yeah, and let's grab her. Lady Axantia, Axantia, with her beautiful root system, and I hope that will start growing. Our yeah, keeps growing actually, keeps growing. That's what we hope. And I will put her like this. And now I fill it up with only large uh, sparks. Large sparks. No liquor today. And again, I shake it a little bit. 
get it in between the roots. And that's it. Actually, this one does have a hole as well here, but it has also a lot of new roots there. So therefore I don't like to have that big hole there because I think those roots can continue to grow. So they need something to grab on the way. Uh, but now I need to get them in there. Some tapping sometimes helps. Yep, there you go. And here we are. I think it's spotted up quite beautiful. See, we did get rid of that big air gap. There, it's still a little bit there. That's okay. I like that. Little gaps, not, but not too big. And I watched that beautiful new growth. It has some room there again in between the media. Not much, but a little bit. So the new roots are welcome to join the older ones. <laughs> And uh, there we go. Okay, I now uh, will flush the, the, the pots quickly a little bit. I think you can imagine how that looks because I did it uh, a few times on my channel already. And then we will have a final look at them in the greenhouse. I'm sorry for the background noise and also the back, uh, background lighting. It's a bit strong, but this is the beautiful white saigo that we did uh, repot it. Uh, it's next to my uh, other zygos in the same section. I like to uh, group them. So this is the only one that stayed in the orchid room. The other ones did go into the greenhouse. So let's have a look there. Also, I have my fans running, so you will have some background noise. But I cannot uh, keep them off too long. Purpurata is here. And Xantia, Lady Xantia is in the back there. So I have them, uh, those two here with some other orchids that are just recently repotted and keep an eye on. They need to come into a uh, growth uh, um, uh, habit again. <laughs> in a grown, growth spirit, let's put it like that. And my Dendrobium, not Yanking CI, but uh, Lindley Eye is here. <laughs> I always will remember that when I watch this, uh, this orchid. But uh, yeah, this one is uh, put it, uh, 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 yeah, set to my uh, other dendrobiums. So I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this video. Uh, this is quite uh, long because it took me a bit long because I was filming all of them. But I hope you enjoy. Please let me know and we can do uh, very similar videos in the, in the future. For now, thank you for watching. And if you didn't already have, please consider subscribing to my channel. It, was, uh, really, it is really appreciated. And uh, I hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye-bye.